Hi, my name is Mark Knutson from Keysight Technologies. I'm an application engineer working on Pathwave System View Design software. Today, I wanted to kick off a video series. This is the first one uh, showing more details about how to use the baseband link feature in System View. And that allows you to run um, System View from MATLAB cockpit without ever leaving MATLAB. And um, allows you to take advantage of the nonlinear modeling impairments that you can get in system view that you can't get anywhere else. The video series, there's going to be five videos, and this is the first one we're looking at today. And um, it's we're going to go through one of the shipping examples and explain in detail uh, what the example does and how to make the best use of baseband link. The second uh, video, uh, we'll look at how to troubleshoot any error messages that you might encounter. And so that's kind of getting into the basics. Um, then the last three videos of the series will get deeper. Uh, we'll go deeper. We'll look at a, a bigger system simulation um, and look at different scenarios where you have um, a source or sync. The source could be from MATLAB. Let's say it's a 16 QAM signal or it's going to come from system view or you could have the sync where it goes to MATLAB to get processed and analyzed or it, it, it gets analyzed in system view as a sync or combination of both maybe they're at the same data rate or a different data rate and we're also going to look at some scenarios where we can take an ADX file which is created it's a binary encrypted file that gets created when you run a, a simulation from from system view even if it's a remote baseband link sim simulation from MATLAB you can take this ADX file and then post-process any data that you want. If you're new to System View, it's uh, let's do a quick breakdown of some of those base simulators that you you can um, automate from Baseband Link. Um, so the Spectrosys RF Architect design is a frequency domain simulator. It looks like this, where you'd model your transmit, receive, RF front end, your um, your channel. And um, it automatically gives you um, line budget analysis, power, frequency, noise, compression through any paths that you define. And it'll give you at any node in your schematic uh, the spectrum automatically. Um, data flow is a timed envelope simulation, and it'll handle modulation. And it is the interface that we're going to use to interface the baseband link in MATLAB. Um, if you want to combine these two, you could drag from the system view workspace tree the Spectrosys design down as a sub-circuit onto your data flow design, your top-level circuit, and it would use a part called RF link. It would automatically convert the frequency domain simulation to the time domain equivalents, and, and you're off to the races. A uh, pure uh, data flow simulation uh, would look like number one here, where you have a baseband source and sync and your whatever data flow parts. Um, uh, RF link where you have a subcircuit that's a Spectrosys design would look like this. This is the one we're going to look at, number two. Um, we're going to look at the example that ships with System View. It's the 16QAM.M uh, control from MATLAB of the uh, RF AMP uh, workspace. We're going to look at that. Um, in System View 2021, they added the ability to run uh, MATLAB from Linux and to control baseband link. So that's that's a nice feature. The, uh, a, the first example that we're going to look at, um, you can download everything that I'm going to show here. And um, if you wanted to find the shipping example, you could go to Help, Example, Explorer. And you could search on like Baseband Link. And the one we're going to look at is RF AMP. If you explore that in the folder, um, it comes up with all of those five different multiple different examples. RF AMP is the one we're going to look at. And then the .m, the MATLAB scripts we're going to examine is a variation of this RF impairment 16 QAM. So before we get going, uh, I want to show you one thing here. There's a parameter called uh, run from MATLAB. Right now it's set to zero. And um, when I, that's, and it's set to be tunable. Uh, you see I have the tune bar box checked. Um, by, by tuning that from 0 to 1, um, this is what MATLAB control is going to look like um, when MATLAB's running System View remotely. Um, so it's everything that's not short, open, circuited out is going to be what uh, MATLAB runs and controls. So there's a source and a sync, 
and then our, our RF channel. Let's take a closer look at um, the uh, the uh, shipping example uh, and, and the modifications we made in the first example set here. And um, so the shipping example would look like this. So everything when you are controlling it from MATLAB would look, would look like I showed. You'd have a sync at three and a, a source at three and a baseband sync at four. And you're going to get the output of our RF channel. Um, it's going to do a plot from MATLAB of the um, the input spectrum and the output spectrum, the voltage spectrum that's captured. Um, if you wanted to make any change to a cardinal frequency like carrier frequency sampling rate, the first example uh, does 100 megahertz. That's what the shipping example does. If you wanted to change that carrier to like 220 mega, megahertz, um, you have to go into the RF link part and you have to clear the behavioral data. You have to um, set it back to um, like zero and simulate it so you can run the standalone without baseband link. Run that simulate. So you, you go in here, you say clear, clear behavioral data, run the simulation again, even if it's with uh, just a standard built-in source, and save it. And then uh, when you rerun that, um, you'll get the 220 megahertz that, as you desired. So this only happens when you change something cardinal like carrier frequency sampling rate in the RF link. Um, so let's look at uh, take a closer look at uh, what we're going to do in um, ex uh, the example we're going to showcase here today, MK3 RF amp. So what we did is we pulled some some sinks in system view out um, that uh, instead like this one is controlled by uh, equation or run from MATLAB. Um, so and if I change this to one, you see all those are shorted out, and I I pulled down some of these. Um, I I added some sinks that I want to just capture some data. Um, and not be hidden when MATLAB's running it from baseband link. And so we've got our baseband link source and um, our amplifier, our channel, um, and, uh, and then it comes out the baseband link. But there's also some syncs where we're going to capture like the output spectrum. And if you look at this, it's a complex voltage. And we're also capturing the output spectrum called S2. But this is instead of out, uh, complex voltage, it's power phase. We'll come back to that. And EVM we're capturing too. So let's look at um, uh, let's look at on the MATLAB side what we're going to control. Uh, before I do that, um, I should mention there is some things you have to do to, before you run a baseband link simulation. So let's look at that in the main uh, example here. Um, so I already showed you where the shipping example is. Um, if you want to run baseband link from MATLAB, you have to go into MATLAB into the home and you have to say set path and then you have to point add folder if it's not there. You have to point to this program files, key site, system view 2020 or 2021, whatever your version is, baseband link. And uh, once you point to that, you should be able to run baseband link from MATLAB. So let's, uh, let's break down um, how this uh, is example set up to run from from MATLAB. So first, if we hit run, it's going to establish a connection and run, and then fill up all of these, all of the data that's created from the MATLAB program and sending things to system view and back. And we're going to break that down, and then it's going to do some plots, and uh, we're going to show how these plots got created. So first up. Uh, First up, we have lines 1 through 32 in the MATLAB code. Um, so what that's doing is establishing some cardinal um, simulation parameters like sample rate, 2 megahertz, carrier 100 megahertz. Um, then uh, in this example, we're going to generate a 16 QAM signal from MATLAB. So that's what all of these do, RC, RRC filtering. And uh, line 24x is creating that um, 16 QAM signal. Um, and so that's 1 through 32. 36 through um, 40, 43 is basically 
opening the workspace remotely, line 36, uses a call systemview.openworkspace, and it opens our, our workspace, this guy, and um, uh, sets some parameters. Now, these parameters are set on the parameters tab. So th that's one important thing. Uh, you uh, you want to make sure that you define uh, schematic level parameters that you're going to pass in and out, and equations. If you're going to do any equations, you want to do those at the schematic level, not as a not as a um, like a high level workspace equation MATLAB equation block. You want to set them at the schematic level because everything's going to be done from MATLAB through the baseband link. So we've set these are parameters that are passed in carrier F carrier F sample rate, etc. So that's what's done here on lines. Uh, uh, 36 opens a workspace, then it sets values. So the um, workspace analysis, DF2 is the, um, um, we're doing the design 2 16 QAM signal. DF2 controls that, D design 2 16 QAM. So um, it's named off the uh, data flow analysis controller, DF2. And then we set parameters for the carrier. We set to whatever the F carrier was up here at the top, 100 megahertz. We set the sample rate, we set back off power if we're doing that, block size, and run from MATLAB. That's when you set that to one, that's to be run from MATLAB. Um, lines uh, 45 through 56 um, basically establish a container for Y, where we're going to store the output data. And then um, this, this is some uh, line 55 and 56. Let me explain those. So analysis link run from from MATLAB and to MATLAB. Those are the actual instance name uh, from MATLAB of the um, source, baseband so sync, or sorry, the baseband link source. And um, the to MATLAB is the baseband link sync. So those uh, names are set by analysis.link. That makes this source variable point to that instance of the Mat, baseband link in the schematic, the source, and the sync points to the two MATLAB instance. Then there's, you start the uh, simulation, analysis.start, and then you have a for loop um, that goes through the number of blocks we have because we know precisely how many um, samples we want to generate of our 16 gram signal. So you remember that line 24 was the X, that's the, um, um, the 16 gram signal generated from uh, MATLAB. So you notice on line 62, we say source set data, which is a function that passes in each of those um, 16 QAM signals generated by MATLAB. And then Y, which is our container right now until we run this loop, is, is full of nothing, zeros. Uh, we basically use the sync, which points to the, the sync at the output of our, at the end of our simulation, that sync, the baseband link sync, and then gets uses the get data function to bring that in and store it in Y from start index to stop index. When it runs through that simulation set uh, loop and stops, closes the workspace, you have all the data is collected. And um, let's see, lines, uh, uh, line 71 through uh, 85 um, basically is what does this first plot. Um, and so um, this is basically using MATLAB to uh, FFT function and do some, you know, basically 20 log 10. So it's doing the voltage spectra of the Y, which is what was collected at the output of a remote run system view simulation in MATLAB. And then the X is the 16 gram signal. So that's exactly what uh, this plot is. The, the orange is the, uh, the uh, input and the, and the blue is the output, the voltage spectra. So that's how that was generated. Now let's take a look at the last two plots, how those were generated, and we'll finish up. So the um, the ADX file is generated automatically um, when you um, uh, when you run a simulation in the workspace directory of, of your system view workspace directory. So DF2 is the name of that data flow controller, and the ADX file is an encrypted data set. So we can use a function called open data set to open that, and we can basically grab, uh, let's take a look at that. So at the output of, we have some sinks. We have the output spectrum I added, uh, which is the complex voltage. We have an EVM sink that's going to grab the EVM, compute the EVM. Um, we have a spec, uh, spectrum analyzer called S2, and that's doing power uh, spectrum instead of complex voltage. 
and so we can grab those. Um, so what we're going to do here is we grab the um, line 119 grabs the, the EVM results and stores it in here. Um, and then the uh, output spectrum is, uh, is, is grabbed, and that's figure two. The output spectrum, again, was uh, right here, and that's uh, calculated in complex voltage. And so we, we plot that, and that's this one. And uh, so it's just using post-process data from the ADX file and plotting, again, the, the 20 log 10 um, plot. And you notice that does match. Um, the, green, the light green matches what we saw in the dark blue before that we plotted from MATLAB. This time we just plotted it from uh, MATLAB using post-process data grabbed in a sync in system view. And then the last one is the black plot. And um, that is grabbed from that S2 uh, sync. And that S2 sync is capturing the power instead of complex voltage. So we use a 10 log 10 and plot that. and uh, and that's how we get um, that's how we get the plot. And you notice that it's uh, 10 dB more because we're looking at the power spectral plot versus the voltage spectral plot, and that's the reason. So hopefully that um, is inter of interest to you to show you some possibilities to generate tie baseband link to map uh, to system view and get the data that you want. Thanks.